Hello everyone and welcome to this session being delivered by members of Aberdeenshire Council's employment support team. What we're going to look at through these slides is a session on CVs. We're going to cover covering letters, job application forms and also looking at what employers look for. So first of all, we're going to look at our CV tips. So when you're looking to write up your CV, there's a format that employers are going to expect. And what we're going to cover in more detail is these key areas. But your overall, your CV needs to be easy to read. So you want to get in as much information as you can that sells your skills and experience. And if you try to keep this within the two page rule, then this means that you need to make every word count and evaluate what's relevant and what's not. Write up your information in chronological order with your most recent information first. So you, what you don't need to include is information about your date of birth or your marital status, your nationality, and you don't need to have any photos on it. Um, finally, your CV is a formal document, so you want to write with this in mind with no fancy format or font. Um, when it comes to references, uh, you don't need to put in the names or addresses, just simply writing references available on request is enough. So your personal statement, what is it? It's a statement that briefly outlines the knowledge, skills and attitudes and the abilities that you possess. It could be argued that your personal statement is the most important section of your CV. It's the first piece of information an employer will read about you. And if it's not strong enough, they are not likely to carry on reading any more of your CV. It's important that your personal statement stands out and that you really highlight your unique selling points. Using keywords is another way to make your skills and experience stand out. And where appropriate, try and start a sentence with a verb or a power word such as planned or trained, analysed or coordinated, negotiated or communicated or participated. You also want to be mindful that many recruiters and job sites use applicant and tracking system software as a first step in shortlisting CVs. And they're going to be potentially picking up on keywords as well as other things such as your education levels, any certificates you hold, um, relevant skills or specialist skills. So check for keywords and phrases in the job description or person specification and make sure you then include them in your CV. So for example, if the job that describes a role that involves customer service, will then include that term customer service within your personal statement, obviously with evidence of how you gain that experience too. So change of career. If you're looking at a career change, albeit short or long, long term, it'll be really important that you're able to highlight to a potential employer what your transferable skills are. So transferable skills, what are they? They're really just a core set of skills and abilities which can be applied to a wide range of different jobs and industries. As you can see in the slide, these can be broken down into different types of skills, from people skills to being able to undertake financial activities. Perhaps you have managerial experience or clerical skills with IT experience. Maybe you've got research and planning which require analytical approaches. And finally, maybe you have some computer and techni technical skills with the practical experience that goes with these roles. If you find that you um, have gaps in the positions that you are applying for, then you might want to think about how best you can address this through training, courses, or perhaps by gaining some experience.
So your CV should aim to provide the best fit between you and the position you are applying for. So employers will assess your qualities often by looking at four different areas. First off, they'll look at the knowledge that you have, which you're obviously going to provide through the evidence of your experience or any qualifications you have gained. They'll also look at the skills that you possess. These can be generic or you may have some specialist skills that are required for particular skills. in your previous work that you are versatile, that you are capable of carrying out a range of different tasks. And finally, they will assess how your attitude comes across in your CV. Do you have a can-do approach? They may be trying to assess how you would fit into their current team. So when we're looking at highlighting achievements on our CV, research has shown that highlighting achievements is a really important factor to include in your CV. Many people tend to state their previous roles and their responsibilities, but fail to add what they have actually achieved and contributed within that role. And you can really use your achievements to stand out. So you could include information of any awards that you or your team gained, any promotions, um, maybe you were recognised for your contributions in any way, perhaps through sales in increase or something else. The main thing is that you highlight those. So when it comes to CVs, one size does not fit all. And what we mean by this is the importance to edit your CV so it specifically addresses the position that you are applying for. In order to do this, you need to spend time researching what the employer is looking for so that you can reflect that within your CV. So you may want to find out what the company values are, what projects are the, is the company currently involved in, what is the purpose of the role being advertised, is it a new role or has somebody moved on, is the company expanding? You really want to get a good understanding of the job description and check out any definitions within it that you're not familiar with. That way that you can be confident you know as much about the role as you can and you can demonstrate that knowledge when you're writing up your CV. OK, I shall pass over now to Jenna to take you over the next set of slides. Hello, hi there. Um, so my name is Jenna Adams. I'm a colleague of Claire's and part of the team. Um, I'll take you through the next um, few sets of slides. So um, carrying on from where Claire left off, um, how do you know what a particular employer is looking for? So it's again about taking in all of the available information. So it's it's always helpful if the specific advertisement is, is detailed. Um, it might give you a what we're looking for section or what you need to have. Um, some jobs also have a specific um, job profile or a person specification. This might detail um, essential criteria and desirable criteria. Um, again, you can you can do a Google search as well. Um, find out, you know, sometimes you can see um, previous vacancies that they've advertised or you can, they might have a career section on their website that gives a bit more information. If you're fortunate enough to know someone who works for the company, it would be a good place to, to start by speaking to them. Um, however, always be mindful to, to form your own opinions um, and, and not take the, the kind of judgment of, of someone, someone else. Um, Another thing you could do is speak to someone who does a very similar job in another company and they might be able to, to highlight some of the, the kind of key themes or, or skills that, um, that are relevant to the specific job. Um, and yeah, social media nowadays as well, even um, it, it might not tell you so much about their aims and values, but usually if they have a website, there will be a link to their website there. Um, and if it's a specific advert, um, you can always call and, and, and ask to kind of find out a bit more about the, the role um, and the skills that they're looking for if there's a, a, a contact on the advert. 
So moving on to the next slide now. Um, these are uh, some of the key things, uh, key skills and qualities that a survey of British managers identified. So um, as you can see from the, the screen, there's a whole host of um, specific skills there. Um, communication is always a key one, um, a little sort of statement in your CV or your application about how you've uh, used your communication skills in the past, whether this be um, verbal or in writing. Um, IT, another key thing for um, today's skill set, even um, you know, very manual labour jobs might still require um, a, a, a good basis of IT understanding for getting your payslips or completing online learning relevant to the role. So it's a, it's a, it's a good one to highlight. Um, another one, flexibility, you know, as Claire mentioned earlier, being you know, versatile, able to handle a range of things or being able to adapt well under pressure. Um, and team working um, is usually a good one, um, as well as you know any specific skills that you might have, um, such as you know if it's um, accounting, there's the Sage software. Um, if it's a caring type role, you might be trained in sort of mental health or manual handling, um, or you 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 know you may be bilingual and um, that could be used um, depending on the role. So yeah, always good to, to, to highlight the things that are, as Claire said, your unique selling points. So we'll move on again. So this slide is looking at covering letters. So this could be um, this could be a cover letter in relation to a specific job advert, um, or you may want to write a speculative letter um, to employers that you're interested in. So that might be, you know, just a letter to inquire if they have any current or upcoming vacancies. Um, so it's it's always a really nice touch if you can send the letter to a named individual rather than, you know, dear sir or madam um, or to whom it may concern. So if you can get a name by, you know, calling up the company, explain that you're interested in the job advertised or send it in your CV um, and then they can give you the, the name and, and hopefully an email address as well. Um, so it's important to, you know, explain in your letter why you're writing. Um, in relation to the job advert, why it is that you want this job? You know, I'm really interested in this job because, um, and why are you interested in that company? So that's again linking to the part where we said about you know doing your research. So if you can highlight some of the company's aims or values, you know their mission statement or um, a specific project that they're working on that you have experience in. Um, again, important to sell, sell. <laughs> sell your main skills and achievements so sometimes we can find it difficult to highlight the things that we're good at um, but you know this is really important if you, you it's trying to get across that sort of positive attitude as well um, and, and your self-awareness about you know your, your skills and what you can bring to the job um, and again so why the employer should choose you you know what can you do um, differently that maybe somebody else hasn't or what specific experience do you have that that company might be looking for um, explain what you would like to happen next, whether that you're available for an interview, you're happy to discuss any questions that they may have, um, and yeah, highlight what you could add to the company. Um, always, always keep a copy, um, because it's going to be, if you do get invited to interview, it's always going to be good to kind of review what it was that you'd said. Um, so yeah, always keep a copy. Moving on again. So, this is more and more common nowadays with the online job application forms. Um, obviously, you're going to need to have internet access first and foremost before you can do a job application online. Uh, traditionally, the, the local libraries would offer um, internet service if you don't have access to this at home. Um, depending on the area that you're living in, um, I think you can, you can still book a slot there at the minute. Um, always make sure that your email address is professional. So you know if it's an email address that you've had from years ago and it was you know it was maybe it was maybe funny um when you were younger this is going to be the first impression um for this employer so um oh, you know always make sure that it's, it's professional something that you found funny years ago an employer might not find as humorous so um just to be aware of that um another really useful thing to be aware of is that if you're doing an online form some of them will have a time limit depending on the application so um, like for some of the supermarket ones, there's um, like a multiple choice section and same with the Royal Mail, I believe. Um, so it's, sometimes you can be, you, you get a certain amount of time to answer these questions. So in that instance, it's just important to be aware, you know, how much time do I have? 
but also not to panic, just to, to kind of take, take your time, read through the questions rather than rush through the questions um, and just try and prepare as much as you can. And um, you can always kind of have a, have a quick squint and um, save it and come back to it if it's before the closing date. So um, applications will ask you to provide contacts for references. So it's really useful, you know, before you kind of just to prepare yourself before you sit down to do an online job application. Do I have all of the dates that I need? Do I have all of the contact numbers that I need? Um, most forms as well have, so there's usually a personal statement section, something that says, you know, please, please use this section to describe um, your skills and experience for this role. So in that instance, um, it's good to, to use a Word document to type your statement. Um, this will then allow you to check the spelling as well as the, the character count, because some, some of the statement boxes have maybe a limit of say 4,000 4, characters. So it's always um, good to be aware of that. Um, and again, save, save, save. So yeah, always save a copy um, of your application and the job profile, because again, if you are selected to interview, this is going to become really useful for you to sort of read over and refresh. So we'll move on again. So application form tips, much and such the same as um, some of the CV tips from earlier. You know, you want to highlight your skills, your qualities and your experience. Um, you know, read over the job profile or the job advert and try and link in again um, some of the, the kind of key phrases, as Claire had mentioned, if it's customer service, make sure you're, you're putting in a, a, an explanation of um, your skills from a previous role. Um, a detailed history of employment. So yeah, you know, if you've got a good CV, um, you can always use your CV um, to give you your, your, your history for using on application forms. Some application forms as well will allow you to upload a copy of your CV and then it kind of pulls the information. Always best to, um, to just double check uh, that all of the sections are in the right places. Um, so yeah, correct employment dates, etc. If on an application form you may have more room to expand on some of the duties that you've carried out, um, but again, you don't, you know, it's it's important to keep your information um, concise and, and kind of straight to the point, um, because it's easier for the person to read, um, rather than kind of reading through screeds and screeds of sentences. If you can get your point across um, and include those key skills. Um, so, and yeah, to be aware as well, how I'd mentioned earlier about um, some profiles may have essential and desirable criteria. So always kind of be aware um, in the personal statement section, usually that's your opportunity to evidence how you meet these criteria. So, um, you know, if they're asking for something that's essential and you don't possess it, maybe um, consider how you can fill that gap with an online learning or doing some voluntary work. Um, and if you can meet some of the desirable criteria as well, it's always going to work in your favour. Um, so yeah, always be mindful of that and try and make sure that, you know, just work your way through the profile and make sure that you're um, you're not missing anything from there that's worth highlighting. So we'll move on again. So yeah, this is a good one. This is the STAR technique. So you can use this when you're um, sort of writing or in an interview as well, but when you're writing your um, descriptions. So you can, um, this will allow you to, you know, keep it keep it structured as well. So you describe the situation um, and when it took place. So when I was working as a customer service advisor and such and such, um, I was tasked with resolving a customer complaint. The action I took to achieve this was um, the customer then left happy and the reflection was I realised, um, you know, that I could have acted a little bit quicker or sought advice or, you know, you would, you would base your, your own examples. But um, just try and be specific um, and use the STAR technique to, to guide you through. Moving on again. So, and finally, what if you're not getting interviews? So I think it's important to to try and not be too hard on yourself. Um, you know, it's 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 a tough market, um, depending on you know a whole range of industries just now. But um, you know, try and be as honest with yourself as possible. 
have 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 a look over your CV or your application form. You know, did you really spend enough time tailoring it to that specific job? Um, and like I said about being honest with yourself, you know, could you have maybe made a few extra changes here or there? Um, you know, does your CV promote you in the best way? Is it getting across that positive attitude? Um, and, you know, it's always good to ask people for feedback on your CV or your application. And um, they maybe will notice things that, that you haven't noticed. Um, same with when it comes to kind of proofreading. It's always better to have a new set of eyes and they may be able to, to, to capture a better way to word things or promote yourself. Um, also to consider, um, you know, are you applying for appropriate vacancies? If the essential criteria is looking for a specific qualification that you don't have, then, you know, about, about being honest with yourself, again, how likely is it that you're going to get selected um, for that job if you don't have the qualification that they're looking for? Um, and, and then look to kind of fill that gap in other ways. Um, also, you know, try and broaden the way that you're looking for jobs and the way that you're applying for jobs. So. Um, Indeed is great and other job sites are great when they just let you sort of sign in and, and click to send away your CV, but that's taken away that opportunity to tailor the information. Um, so it's always better to you know, use the job sites for searching, but maybe try and apl apply directly to the employer. Um, yeah, as we've mentioned, maybe look at kind of filling some of the gaps that have been highlighted um, by doing some online learning um, or some, some voluntary work. Um, and often hard but really try and stay positive and um, most recruiters won't get back to you nowadays unless you've been selected for interview so you know just kind of try and prepare yourself from that from the beginning and don't take it personally it really is just the, the kind of volume of applicants and um, they just they genuinely don't have the time to to get back to everyone to explain that they've been unsuccessful so um, bear that in mind um, and, and try and stay positive and, and seek help if it's available so that will be us at the end of our slides so as you can see we are the employment support team and um, if you would like information and advice on any of the information that we've discussed today um, our phone number is on the screen there as well as our facebook page which is always good to keep an eye on and um, because we quite often share um, a range of vacancies across aberdeen city and shire um, or if you prefer our email address is there on the screen as well and um, that's our main inbox so it'll just be directed um, to the key worker for your area.